And then you said a little while ago about that kind of, you had the plan to Wudang way anyway, and then there was the nudge from 2020. Yeah. So can you <laughs> describe that process? When, when did it feel like, no, I need <laughs> to get this out now. I need to start getting this content out. Well, like I said, we, we, we started doing, the school started doing some live classes on the Chinese version of TikTok, the doing, which is pretty popular. And they were doing live classes to kind of like every day they were doing uh, parts from Taiji. And they were talking about, we had a lot of conversations and they're like, oh, you should try this. And that's when I, I think it was when we were first, we were first starting to get the coaches and the students back, the, the, at least the traditional class and, uh, and health class students were starting to get back. And I, I think that was in March, April when I did that. And really about then is when I, I started considering it more seriously and started taking those blueprints and actually putting meat on them and putting, you know, putting the structure together. Um, Cause yeah, I didn't, I didn't end up launching it until, until the autumn, right. until almost the end of the year. And it's, it's been a project I've wanted to do so that there's a combination of, you know, with the, with the, the, the slowing down of the school a little bit there's that combination of I've got a little bit more time, I've got a little bit more value in like in like people asking about this, and and there's a there's a kind of a, a need, you know. There's there's a I, I don't really want to say market, but there is a market for it. There's you know there's there's a purpose for it, you know. Before it was like, well, I can you can just come here, and but I don't have that that same talking point anymore. So. Uh, it made me think like, how can I do this? How can I bring some of Wudang to some, to, to everybody, to somebody? Um, and I think that's, I think that's, that's going to be, that's going to be the direction things are going to move anyway. Yeah. So to have that kind of momentum is nice, but you know, and, and a you, lot of consideration. Yeah. And you talked about, you know, your, your pleasant surprise mm -hmm. and satisfaction of teaching Tai He Chuan and, and seeing people's mm -hmm. videos come back to you and seeing how people have received the teaching progressed. Yeah. On the flip side, what were the challenge? What have been the challenges? Is it have there been anything that's kind of come up that was unexpected? Um, that that has been some kind of a mm -hmm. challenge or block to the kind of the teaching process you'd intended. Well, I mean, what, the the two biggest problems are the two most obvious is that. I, I realize as a teacher, and I know this about myself anyway, how much I depend on that visual feedback. Uh, the same when I was learning here, you know, I know how I learn and I know how other people learn from observing and teaching over the years. And the biggest problem in the beginning is just like, how do I take the same experience and explain it in the right context to where you can look at the video and, and follow it and not just, and not just like, you know, listen to it and then be like, oh, that's cool. And then go do something else. Um, and so I, I hope I can explain those kind of like angles, directions. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very logical. I try to break things down analytically. And I hope that method speaks to people rather than me saying something very energetic or spiritual, which I want to get to, but I, I, I like the really, you know, step to the left on your heel, do this, face this way, drop your hip, like really break it down and, and, uh, part by part. Mm. And so that was number one, you know, and, and I know, okay, I need to show different angles. I need to like, uh, cause if I was in class, that's what I would do is I would move around them. I would, I would do one time where I'm explaining it as I talk, as I, as I practice, I would do one time as I'm just calling out certain points and I would do another time just completely quiet and have you follow. So that I do this in class anyway, like, uh, you're familiar with five animal Qigong. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I would teach, you know, it doesn't matter uh, before the quarantine, I was the only coach for about a year at the old school because we have two locations mm -hmm. and new students would come and they're like, I don't know if I've been Qigong. I, I don't know if I should practice with you. I'm like, go to the back and do the whole thing. There's, there's no breakdown. We're not going to, we're not going to do piece by piece. And that's, Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. you're back. You're back. Yeah, I, uh, we got as far as go to the back and follow along. Yeah. So, so I would just send them back and say, "We're going to go through the full thing." And the first, you know, you you repeat everything three times. So the first time is breaking it down step by step, telling you over 
over amounts of details. <laughs> so you really just get in place and then I make you sit there. And then we do it a second time where I call out a few of those key points. And then the third time we go through it, I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then people pick it up. They just have to learn how to slow down. Um, especially with the internal arts, with the, the, the Taiji, with the Qigong. It's always like, I just want you to step this way. I want you to do this move. I want you to breathe this way. And they start looking over their shoulder and trying to check you. And I'm like, slow down. We have to do piece by piece, you know? And, mm -hmm. and if you get people in that rhythm, you can, you can, you can solve that problem. The, the second biggest problem is mine. <laughs> and that's the not having a student to look at. Uh, Filming those, filming the basic practices for the Wudong Wei channel. I, I didn't want to do daily live classes all the time. I wanted to get these basics like filmed. So that way anyone can watch them. That way when I do something later, you can say, hey, there's the beginning point, right? Mm -hmm. And those were hard because it's just looking at a camera and it's like, you know, it's not the same expression. It's not the same feeling. And some of it I'm trying to make as if, this is your first video. And then it's like, I'm repeating myself a lot. And it's not as, it's more awkward than what I naturally do every day. So that there's a big learning curve there. And I'm still on it, but, but, but no, that, that pressure is good because it challenges me, but it's, it's a, it is a, is a, it is a challenge, right? Yeah. And, and then I suppose that the, the theme of challenge is, is where I want to take our last question, our last discussion point. Um, I've, I've, some of my students have, have had COVID over the last year and I've tried to kind of start a stepping stone process on the way back to um, dealing with fatigue, trying to improve energy, trying to get back into training. Um, right. Or there might be other students with other health conditions. And I'm wondering, you know, maybe from the, the health class perspective, have you, what would your, what would your advice be for someone who's coming from a place where um, they have to start from really modest kind of beginnings, lots of mm. um, quite um, significant physical restrictions, health restrictions, and they wanna start that journey back towards um, continuous training. What would your advice be for those people? I mean, any, any practice is going to be beneficial. Um, I, I know with with these, with with just 2020 as an example, and with if you're having these kinds of if you're having the COVID, if you're having this and getting over it, of course there's a lot of rehabilitation that has to happen to mm -hmm. to get back to 100%. Um, if if it can be, because I know like a lot of the lung restriction is the big thing. Mm -hmm. But knowing what the issues are is the first thing in every problem solving thing. And, and, and approaching it from that standpoint, like understand you have these limitations and, and give yourself some room to grow. Um, because we, I haven't had a student like this yet coming from specifically from COVID uh, recuperation, but having people come from all different walks of life from different issues, whether it's physical or mental or emotional, we all have our struggle. We all have we all have something that we have to overcome. And it's, it's probably not just one thing, it's probably many things. Um, and each day is, is, is a challenge, but we, we have to, we shouldn't be better in spite of something. Mm. You know, we should be better because of something. So what I mean by that is, I, I came here and I had lots of restrictions. I had lots of difficulties and maybe things that happened before I came or maybe things specifically while I was here. Um, maybe in a specific class, you know, you even have something that's hard to get over. And people have this big um, general direction of they want to break past something. They want to, they want to, you know, they want to be the hero of the moment and they want to spite it. They want to you know, kind of laugh in fate's face. And I do think that it's important to just understand that that's where you're coming from. This is what's going to make you stronger, not what's making you weaker. You know, it might be a challenge now, but eventually you will look back and that's going to be the thing that made you greater, you know. And, and for specific practices, if that's more like what you mean, I mean, you have 
lung restrictions or you have stamina, endurance, flexibility. That's just letting you know what you need to work on. You know, um, we all have the capability. We all have the, the, the chance. Um, you know, we're still here. We have a chance. Mm. So I, I, I hope people, you know, take my advice that brought me to Wudang in the beginning is always asking what if, and eventually you just have to ask what if now, you know, mm. instead of what if over there someday, what if just right now, you know, we, we have the opportunity to fix it and just do it. <laughs> yeah. Do but, you know, but, you know, have that, have that growth, have that time, uh, give yourself time to that because that does, it's, it won't happen overnight, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a wonderful place for us to finish the conversation. Thank you so much, Shifu. Of course, of course. I hope it helps. Yeah.